Hello, in this video we're going to be going over some examples so that you know you can practice your uh, time complexity, I guess, calculation speed and accuracy. Um, so yeah, if you haven't already, I recommend you watch the previous two videos on time complexity and so, and also this, um, I guess, video is more geared towards bronze and novice programmers, but um, I guess, yeah, we'll just get into it. So we have like a couple examples here and we'll just go through them. Um, and you guys can have a chance, a shot at solving them on your own. Um, so yeah, so let's just take a look at the first one. Um, I guess you can like pause the video for a moment and then try to figure out what the big O notation is on your own. Okay, so um, a couple of reminders, the big O notation you want to keep in terms of the variables and it's a worst case scenario. Um, yeah, so if we look at it, we have a for loop that runs n times. So we have already uh, O of n. And then we have two for loops inside. And so the first for loop runs n times. And the second for loop also runs n times. So what we have here is times, um, I guess you could say n iterations. So we run through the outer for loop n times, and then for each iteration, we run through the for loop, another for loop n times, and we do that again. So we have is n times n plus n. So um, this is just 2n, and we get rid of the factor. It's just n times n, and then that becomes n squared. So the big O notation to this code is n squared. And even though we have two for loops in here, we, um, we just count it as n because, you know, obviously that's 2n, two for loops is 2n. And like I said before, we just get rid of the constants because we're trying to find it in terms of n. So this example is n, um, n, O of n squared um, code. So let's take a look at the second one and you can take a moment to pause. I'll actually make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so if we take a look, we have an outer for loop of n, so O of n, and then another one of n, and another one of n, and another one of n. So what we have is O of n to the fourth. Yeah, so this one's relatively simple. It's just four nested for loops that each run n times. Okay, so we have here. So take a look at this one, I guess. Uh, I think we went through a similar example before, but yeah. Um, so this one is just um, a for loop n times, and then we have multiple operations inside the for loop, but uh, okay, let's just say this is three operations. We have O of n. Um, n iterations times three operations each time, but that's just three n and that's a constant, so we get rid of it. So this is just O of n. Then let's take a look at this one, I guess. So what we have here is um, int count and then int i equals zero. Oh, I guess I'll actually let you guys take a look. Okay, so. In this one, we have a for loop that runs n times. And then we have, oh, this should have the same one. Then we have a while loop counting backwards. So um, if you think about it logically, the count is going to equal n at the end because it starts at 0. And then it keeps, oh, not n. It would be n minus 1. So basically n. Let's just say it's n. So count will be um, roughly n at the end of the for loop. And the while loop goes until count comes back to zero. So it's good. The while loop is going to run uh, roughly n times. Um, actually, I think it shouldn't run exactly n times, or maybe n minus one. But this one would be we have a for loop that runs n times, and then another while loop that runs n times. And this is just 2n. And like I said before, this just equals O of n. So 
So I'll give you a moment to look at this example. Okay, so in this example, what we have is t, a uh, for loop of t, so it's O of t. And then we have um, j that runs through n times, so n. And then we have a while loop that goes from 0 to m. But then it actually increments by 3. So we're actually skipping. It's uh, We're incrementing 3 times faster than just a regular incrementation if we went by 1. So it's technically m over 3 iterations. OK, but we don't really care about the constants. We want to keep it in terms of the variable. So let's just leave it like that. So the big O notation for this code would be t times n times m. OK, and then I guess we'll just go through one last quick example. Um, I guess like this. Um, this is actually quite a common example in problems where what you have is start at i, and then let's just say. So yeah, what do you think the time complexity will be for this code? I'll, I'll give you a moment. To um, yeah, so um, you might be thinking, well, we have an outer for loop that runs O of n times, and then we have an inner for loop that in a way runs, it only runs n times in the first for, uh, iteration, but then after it slowly um, decreases, so it's kind of going to look like um, the first time it's going to be 5, or sorry, n, um, then n minus 1, then n minus 2, and so on. But um, the whole point of big O notation is to calculate the worst case, so what we do in this scenario is we just multiply by n. And we're going to ignore the fact that it's not actually n, it's um, uh, a lot less than that. But um, the whole point of big notation is we want to visualize, you know, what is the worst case scenario. And since, you know, in other parts of your code, it might calculate less in the big notation, it's, um, it should be pretty accurate if you do it like this. So in, whenever you run into this kind of problem where you're in the nested for loop in the second part, you're iterating from the iterative variable of the first one to n, then just count it as n squared. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, those are just some practice examples, and I hope they helped. Thank you for watching.